I recently had an issue with my Brinsey chicken door opener. At the end of the day, it wasn't closing up. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through what I did in order to fix this device. But I'm not just going to jump right in and say, this is what the problem was and this is what you need to do. What I do in this video is kind of walk you through my process of going into it, investigating it, figuring out uh, what all the different pieces are, and then resolving the problem in that way. Because most of the time when you have a problem with something uh, you know, around your homestead, around your house or whatever, uh, there's a whole process of kind of getting into the object, kind of figuring out how everything works, and then from there uh, making the appropriate changes. And I think that's probably a more useful skill than knowing specifically how to unstick a door like this. So that's the nature of this video. If you want to stick around with me, we're going to go into this, kind of figure it out as we go along, and... Oh, that's a chicken that bites me. <laughs> We're going to figure it out as we go along, and at the end of the video, we do get it working again. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I wanted to share with you an issue that I had with this Brinsey uh, automatic chicken door opener. Uh, so far I've had pretty good luck with this. I bought a really cheap one first, and then I bought this thinking that this was going to be, you know, I'm paying for quality. I think it was like $200 for this uh, chicken door, but I figured, well, if it's the last chicken door I ever buy, that's, that's totally fine. Well, it's run pretty well for about a year, and it just, a couple of days ago, uh, stopped functioning and I was thinking oh you know I guess you just can't you can't buy quality no matter how much you spend but I think it's actually a pretty simple issue and we're gonna go into it together and I think that uh, the cord has just been kind of stuck on uh, a little uh, spool that uh, wraps it up so look in here nice and close I've uh, I took off the, the front face and the front face is held on with just four little screws that come in from the back and what I think is the issue is right here. Uh, this is the string that pulls the door up and this is like I think this is some kind of like an auto uh, shut off thing so when it pulls it this much it kind of clicks that over. Um, in fact there's a little metal uh, connection point here which maybe makes co contact with something I'm, I'm just guessing. But the problem is here's the uh, the string around the motor spool. This is all loose here, and if I pull on this, it doesn't jiggle any of this stuff. So I think, uh, like sometimes I have my clothesline at, at my home, and like the the, the rope would kind of like flop off to the side of the uh, the roller on there and kind of just jam up. And I think that's what's going on in here. So I pulled uh, four extra screws here. There's uh, two here and then two here. I'm gonna lift this whole piece up right now, gently. And we're gonna look at this area right in here. I'm trying to kind of keep everything together. Yeah, look at this, right in here, you see? I'm gonna use this as a pointer. So the, the string comes in here, and it's supposed to just go around this little spool here, but if you look around here, right where the, uh, the motor has a little shaft coming out here, look, it's all gummed up around there. So for some reason, it kind of hopped out of the spool, and it's around here, and if I can just get it off there, that's gonna solve the problem. So let's see if I can do that right now with you guys here. Yeah, so that was the issue. I like it when problems are solvable. All right, so this is starting to kind of flop off there. Yeah, a lot of it is just all jammed up around there. I wonder if this has been an issue that's been going for a while or what. This motor doesn't seem to want to pull backwards, so I'm going to slide it up and out of here and just pull all this, this string off of that. Again, I'm trying to keep this as intact as I can. Yep. Got a bunch of wraps right around that. That is why it all jammed up. Alright, keep going. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how much got wrapped up in there. Alright, there we go. So now we've got the shaft and all the string is just on the spool right here. I'm going to put this back. I'm honestly not sure how that happened. You would think that they'd have like something to kind of direct that. Okay, there's a little bump coming off the side of this thing. Does that like slide in somewhere? Okay, yeah. At the bottom of this little motor, there's this little uh, this little metal bump right here, and that needs to slide into a slot on the bottom. And the purpose of that is to keep it so the motor doesn't start spinning. 
around. Let's uh, get that to pop in there. Okay, there we go. So now we can pull all this string out. <laughs> and now it's flopping off to the other side over here. Okay, there we go. That should that should do it like that. But that's all that that solves the issue right there. We got all these on here, so now this thing can uh, can work freely. Right. I'm just gonna put this back together here. They don't make these wires super long. So I left all the screws in there. Uh, little shafts there so I can put them in. Whenever you're re-screwing screws into plastic, you want to uh, run them counterclockwise uh, until you feel like a little tap to find where their previous thread was. Because if you don't do that, what you're going to do is the screws are just going to cut their own new threads down into the plastic. And uh, that uh, over time, if you keep pulling things out, it's just going to make it so the uh, the screws aren't very uh, uh, secure anymore. In this particular uh, setup, they've got this weird thing, which I think is like a, an afterthought in their uh, on their part. There's this kind of rubber washer, which I think is probably from somewhere else, or it was like a, a part that they'd had, and it goes right here, and there's nothing to retain it. And I think what that is for is. Uh, to make it, it like is a, a, buff, a bumper for the back of the circuit board. So when you're pushing buttons on the front, I think they probably had some issues with this thing detaching, oops, uh, detaching from uh, where it's set in there. And they just added this as kind of a eh, last minute kind of MacGyver way of keeping this thing from moving around. Maybe it, it bites into these little uh, um, uh, barbs on the back there. So, I don't know, it seems to work, but it's a, it's a little bit macgyver -y. I think if they were going to do a redesign of this, they would uh, probably uh, want to uh, change that. Okay. Almost there, and as soon as I get the... Yeah, actually, there's enough in there right now that I can do a test. Alright, this has a little bit of spin in it. Again, I'm not entirely certain how it uh, failed in the first place. If this fixes it, I'm going to feel fairly positive about this. I, I, love, uh, I love tech that you can fix. Let's see, what's it doing? Is it spinning it up? Something's spinning in there. I can't really see what it's doing. All right, so I figured out what was going on. Uh, it was trying to pull up the, uh, the door, but it wasn't moving. And what I figured out is it's right in here. Uh, this is where the, the string passes from outside into the, uh, the chamber that has the spool. And what I did is I had accidentally clamped uh, the string down between these two pieces of plastic. So if you're doing this yourself, you want the string to be all the way to the back there, there's a little bit of a notch and that allows it to uh, to move uh, freely through this area here. There we go. Alright, so now that it's free. The other thing I, I made a mistake on is that this little green bead here, this needs to stay inside. And uh, when this little knot gets up to the bead, it draws the bead up to there and uh, actuates this. So that that should do it now. Uh, why don't we, uh, I'm going to put it back together and then we'll do another test and you can see that test. Alright, that was it. Uh, it is dropping the door now. It's moving freely. What I'm going to allow it to do is drop the door the entire way. I'm wondering if uh, at some point uh, maybe I spun the door around when I was installing it. Maybe I got some little kinks in there. So what I want to do is just let the entire string kind of just go out and then come back in and have there not be any uh, twists in the string. So as it goes up, I'm just going to allow it to just sort of get any kind of like twists that it might have in there, out of there. But, uh, but that was it. So the essential issue was that the string uh, popped off of the spool. It, uh, from there, kind of bound up around the, uh, the shaft from the motor going into the spool. And then when I closed it up the second time and I, uh, I tested it, I'd accidentally clamped the, uh, the string uh, 
in some of the plastic so that it still couldn't move freely. But now it's working great. I have no problem with uh, electronics and things like that. They have an issue as long as you can fix them. And I like the fact that I, could get, I was able to go in here, I was able to fix the problem. And what the hell is that? <laughs> All right, so I think I figured out what was going on. I mentioned earlier in the video that I've, this thing kind of has kind of a predetermined uh, height that it will pull things up to. And I think it was just that I was so cavalier about winding this, uh, sort of because I was wondering if uh, this thing itself was just going to actuate it. I'm not actually really sure what this thing does. There's a little bit of an electrical contact here, and if you look over at this, it might swing up near these, and maybe these things are kind of sensing for it, and if they touch it, uh, if they touch some metal or something, but it, you know, just this surface and this doesn't seem to me to be a switch. I'm honestly not sure what that does, but what I'm gonna do, and what I've been doing, is just using this to draw up that bead up to uh, the final position where it normally stops, which is a little bit further back from there because I can't wind it all the way there. And I'm going to drop this back in here like that. I think that should do it. That gets the knot up in here. This seems to be the, the high position. As you can see, I, I dissected it a little bit more. As I go, I'm getting a little more comfortable with it. This wire, and by the way, this is kind of interesting. What they did here, uh, this is the motor right here. Uh, this motor probably spins really quickly, and I, I was wondering what this sil uh, really shiny silver section is, and what I think this probably is, is the door moves rather slowly, and you have to lift a fair bit of weight with that, and this motor is probably not super strong, so what this motor does is it spins pretty quickly, and it, uh, there's, probably, there's probably a gearbox where it translates the super fast spinning of this to a slow spinning of this, and in doing so, it gives you a lot of mechanical advantage. You get more strength, so it moves slower, but you get more strength. So this is interesting. It's kind of like a gearbox, I think, what is what is in there. So you turn this relatively weak, fast spinning motor into a slow spinning, like powerhouse. It'll just rip your face off if you get in the wrong place. Uh, so uh, wire comes up through this section here. I feel like I'm getting to be an expert on assembling and disassembling this. This goes through here. We're going to use this, using that same kind of backward spin method to find the place where they, they slide in, although I'm not, I'm not really feeling it super strong here. I'm going to remember to keep the string going through the, the gap here. Remember how last time I clamped the, the string between these two pieces of plastic? So tightening that down here. Yeah, as I was in the middle of saying before, I gasped and like dumped an expletive on you guys. I forget which one I used. I was able to fix the problem. And what the hell was that? I, I love the idea of uh, electronics that you can fix. Any kind of machine you can fix I think is great. It's one of the problems with a lot of uh, consumer electronics and anything you buy now is just it's not made to be fixable. It's made to be thrown away. Uh, this is the, uh, the power feed for the motor which plugs into this and you see it's got this little key at the top, which slides into this little finger right there. And these should go on very smoothly. If you ever do this and it doesn't go on smoothly, something's caught up, something's wrong. So, uh, got these little wires that they have wrapped around that, that uh, little uh, tower there. This slides up in here, holding that in place. This little MacGyver thing they added goes in there. I think that's, <laughs> that's everything. All right, cool. And uh, I'll just give it a quick test with me holding it together before I screw it up. <laughs> and by that I mean screw it back together, not mess it up. Okay. Okay, so I think it's yeah, it's retra retracting it, and it stopped. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, I gotta wait for the menu to clear up before I can do a, a test run of this. Next time you'll see me is either gonna be me happy in the chicken coop uh, with this installed and I'm me demoing it for you, or me sitting in the same place. Uh, well, you'll find out. But if I'm sitting here, I won't be as happy as if I'm back in the coop because that will mean there's another issue. Okay, and so far, so good. Here is the door. Now I've paid attention not to let this spin around so I don't get little kinks in the string here. And I'm gonna reinstall it. Okay, yeah, actually I can just do it like that. This one goes in the back. And that way it picks up both. If 
that. That's how it opens and closes. We've got a couple of screws here to mount this. On. Okay, cool. And uh, the way this thing functions is from the standby screen, which is no screen at all. Uh, if I hold the down button, it will go down. So let's see, for a few seconds. I hope I see that thing start moving down. Oh no! You want to get pets? This is my favorite chicken right now. This is Sunny. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. And Sunny loves to be, she loves little pets on her chest. She's the, definitely the most affectionate of all the chickens right now. Like she'll run up to you and want you to pet her and cuddle her. Oh. Well, that seemed like it fixed it. I would highly recommend this door. I know I had a little bit of an issue with it where it got a little bit tangled, but the components in there are really solid. I like the fact that it's, you know, you just go in, you can fix it up. I found the tech support uh, was pretty good because that little rubber washer thing, uh, when it arrived, it was rattling around on the inside, and I contacted them, and a, a real guy, like a technician, he, uh, it's okay, he, uh, you know, went over it with me, and, like, they totally supported my questions about it. So I would, I would definitely recommend this company. Now I'm gonna open the door by holding the up button with the, uh, the screen off for a few seconds until it starts going up. And there we go, and it worked. You have your door again. The last couple of days I've had to come out here in the morning and let them all out. Now the days of that tyranny are all over. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. If you have this kind of an issue, uh, you know that may be a way of fixing it. Essentially, what it was was that the the rope jumped off the spool and it wound around the shaft from the motor and kind of tangled itself up. And uh, just undoing that and then solving the problems where I kind of clamped the wire and stuff myself, got rid of all the issues, and now you guys have a door again. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.